We all make mistakes. Some are small, some are large. But his mistake, born of innocence, fueled by pride, was the greatest and most terrible of them all. Some believed when the prince journeyed to the island of time to escape death, that he returned alone. The amulet destroyed. The Dahaka appeased. The Empress dead. The prince was free at last. But this is not how it happened. The truth is that he chose to save me from my destiny. In doing so, he set me free. And doomed us all. Prince, of all the possible futures, this one held the most promise that something has changed. Do not worry, Kailina. No harm will come to you in Babylon. I promise. Look, we are nearly home. As our ship lay sinking in the harbor, the prince found himself in a city quite different from the one he left behind. The normally busy wharves were now decimated. Blood-spattered awnings and splintered door frames were all that waited to greet him. And the people, merchants, beggars, fishermen, were nowhere to be found. Others had taken their place. The prince made his way along the torn and blasted district, haunted by visions from his past. The dockside tavern where he'd spent many late nights was now reduced to cinders. Babylon's proud armada, which he would often come to greet, lay cracked and broken, cast to the bottom of the Euphrates. Everywhere there are signs of battle, but what of Babylon's guard? Where have they all gone? <sighs> Why is it that every time disaster strikes, I find myself without a proper blade? Still, it's better than nothing. Kylina! No! No way into the city now. I will have to climb this siege tower and enter from above. I can sense the others who have passed through this place, intent on bringing harm to my family. Four weeks I've been at sea. 
and every day spent dreaming of my return to Babylon. But never, in all my visions of the future, did I suspect a homecoming such as this. War. It is the only answer. But war with who? And why? You should know that it was not love that drove him, but duty. I was his responsibility. He had made a promise, a promise that was now broken and undone. As with all mistakes he had made, the prince meant to fix this. A noble goal to be certain, but a selfish one as well. For he was motivated to ease his own pain. I know these streets. Knew them anyway. I must keep pace with Kylina if I'm to find the one responsible for this. Where is kind Asha, who would stand before her stall selling fruits and flowers? Or the errant children, making trouble as all young ones do? Gone. All gone. Home. And yet nothing is as I remember. Objects once familiar and comforting now fill me with uncertainty and dread. What has happened here? I should be resting now, recovering from my time away, or sitting with father. Instead, I'm forced to run and hide, sneaking about like a common thief, hunted in my own city. Pay attention to what the prince overheard as he drew close to where I was being kept. You are called away. Many years ago, I journeyed with the Maharaja of India to the island of time, intending to claim its secrets. What we discovered was a barren, ruined place. Its halls deserted, and its guardians gone to sand. Strange tales adorned its walls, which spoke of an empress. An empress of time. But of this enigmatic creature, there was no trace. We returned to India with treasure nonetheless. A staff. A dagger. An empty hourglass covered in jewels. And books! Such secrets they contained! For even then, I was an older man, and knew that my time would soon be at an end. The books showed me that life eternal was not beyond my reach, but it required the essence of the Empress herself, the power of the sands. But you were gone. They were gone. Or so I thought. I turned my attention towards other pursuits, and left that dream behind. But then, four weeks ago, the dagger stirred and showed me things, whispered to me in my sleep. It drew me here, towards Babylon. Alas, the Maharaja did not share my vision, would not grant me leave. So I slew him and claimed his kingdom, his army for my own. Nothing would stand between me and my desire. Recklessly, the prince drew his weapon and charged forward, intending to rescue me. It was as if he had learned nothing from his past adventures. Or perhaps he'd simply forgotten, made blind and deaf by fear and rage. This is how it happened. This is how I died. No! Vizier! Ah, you must be the Prince of Persia. Come home at last. Too late, I'm afraid. I believe I have something of yours. Oh, no! Kailena!
Father, forgive what I have done, wherever you are. Once more the wheels of suffering are set in motion by my hand. In taking Kylina from the island of time, I have changed the course of history. Without the sands of time, I never journeyed to Azad, never killed the Vizier. Now he lives again, driven by the same mad desire. I promise no harm would come to her. I am being pushed deeper into the palace, and further from my enemy. My arm! What's happening? What has the Vizier done to me? I don't... Oh! Everything had come full circle. The Prince had resurrected his greatest enemy. Worse. He had accidentally delivered me into the man's hands, unleashing a nightmare plague across Babylon. As if this was not enough, the prince had nearly been transformed by the sands himself. Though he had avoided death, he had not escaped entirely untouched. Wake up, prince. Wake up. Wake up! The way behind you is gone, so you will have to find another exit from these sewers. Be quick about it. Start moving. What? Who's there? Be careful. The planks are slick. Mind your balance. Good, good. Head down. Oh, they do not seem to like the light. It is this. Even as I fight them, I grow weaker. Kill them now. Let their lives replenish yours. Feels good, does it not? Lead them into the light. Strike while they are blind. Ah, I knew you had it in you. I assume this is not permanent? It is. If you want it to be. I do not. But you will. Why then is this happening to me? You have been infected by the sands of time, as I am sure you have noticed. Maybe it's the dagger. Maybe it's all the time you spent amongst the sands. Or <laughs> amongst the Empress. Either way, you are resisting it. Mostly. Mostly? You did just transform into something rather unique, so I think the word is quite appropriate. Think of it this way. You have been given a gift. You're stronger, faster. Uglier. Now, now. That explains the transformation. But who are you? Have you not realized? I am your untapped potential, your unrealized dreams. I am part of you. You... You... You're inside me? It's gone now. 
water seems to fight this corruption. Why did you hide this from me? What? And ruin all the fun? When the prince was struck by the sands of time, something was woken within. Something strange and cunning. Something dark. The seven years spent on the run had embittered the prince and made him hard. This burden sustained his other half, gave it strength. The prince was tempted to do as it said, for it was a light in the darkness, offering comfort and guidance to a man who had just lost everything. But what were its intentions? Why did it help him? Only time would tell. So far away. As a child, father would tell me stories. Pay attention. Something's happening down there. Is that? It's the vizier. He has been completely transformed. Interesting. He has used the power of the sands to transform his army. And these artifacts will allow him to transport them across the city with ease. He appears to be in complete control. Things do not look too good for you at the moment. I will not let the Vizier have Babylon. My city. My throne. He has used that beam as a gate. We will follow him through it. Well, that certainly went according to plan, did it not? You really should know by now that entering portals made of sand only leads to trouble. I will simply have to resort to a more traditional form of transport. Hopefully with greater success. Separate them into two groups. Send the weak ones to the workshop. The strong must go to the palace and arena for change. <laughs> Wonderful. We not have enough to deal with already. That chariot should get us home. Sure, you can control this thing. Let us hope. If I crash, it is the end for both of us. The prince. Stop him. And so once more, the prince began the journey home. His mind a fire with visions of the justice he would visit upon the vizier. Vigilant. Done well, Prince. Though I am sure it was not intentional. Watch out! That was close. Behind that column.
The once bright and vibrant streets of Babylon now stood all but deserted, its inhabitants either dead or fled. Those left behind suffered terribly, captured, tortured, and transformed. But the prince did not notice this. So focused was he on the vizier. I'm impressed. Oh, good. Your opinion means a great deal to me. Is that how you thank the man who just saved your life? First, you did not save my life. I did. Second, you are not a man. Just a disembodied voice. A ghost. And third, I never asked for your help. And I certainly do not need it. While I admire your bravado, you would be wise to show some respect. And you would be wise to keep quiet. You are distracting me and we are no longer alone. Go! What are with the others? Why are you doing this? We have done nothing wrong. Save your crying for someone who cares. I should do something. Go ahead, fall to your death. That will be of great use to them. Quiet, Mel. Do you wish to join him in the arena? Don't! Don't take me there! Anywhere but that place! Something is happening down there. Whatever it is, it will continue until you have defeated the Vizier. You cannot help these people! Then let us make haste. Onward and upward, Prince! Hurry to the palace and reclaim your throne! I'm moving as fast as I can. What do you suggest? That I grow wings and fly? One can always dream. Babylon's defenders still live. The city is not yet taken. Perhaps father is among them. Who is there? You have done me a great service. Show yourself, that I might thank you. So very strange. I wonder... No. It is silly to think such things. I don't like the looks of this. This thing was once a man. He was there when Kylina died.
He can no longer see you. Move in and attack him directly. Prince fled from the arena, embarrassed by the unwanted attention, fearful that they might realize he was becoming a sand monster. But something tugged at him. The freed citizens believed he had come to rescue them. That people, his people, now lived when they should have died. This was just an accident. His thoughts had been only of reaching the Vizier and exacting revenge. Perhaps now the prince would remember he once fought for something other than his lost honor. It was simply too soon to tell. My name. Yes. I... I eagerly await your response. I have heard tales, wondrous tales of a beautiful and brave princess of India. One who has traveled to Babylon seeking to punish an evil vizier who has caused her great distress. See? Now she's going to kill us. How in the world have you managed to survive this long? Good luck, stranger. She called me stranger. She remembers nothing of our past together. Because it never happened. You know, no sands of time, no Azad. You get the vizier, but you lose the girl. It doesn't matter. We're better off without her. Or have you forgotten? Maybe a few arrows in the back will help stir your memory. We must catch up with her. Fair enough. Though I suspect you and I want very different things from the girl. You still have feelings for her. Admit it. Farah and I went through so much together. Though she may not remember, I can never forget. <laughs> the Dagger of Time. How did you come to possess that? Here we go again. I took it. From the Vizier. That traitor. He murdered my father, enslaved my people, imprisoned me. And all in the name of becoming some kind of god. I know too well what he is capable of. But I intend to find him, and punish him for what he has done to my kingdom. You are the son of Sharaman? The Prince of Persia? And you are the daughter of the Maharaja. We both seek the same thing. Perhaps we should journey together. Perhaps. Provided you can keep up. I grow tired of her little tests. It is simply her way. I assure you, she will prove a valuable ally. All right. I'm impressed. I suppose it is wise to work together. There is strength in numbers, after all. I'm glad you've come around. Just don't make me regret it. Now let us find the Vizier. With the Dahaka defeated, the prince was slowly regaining pieces of his former self. The pressure and desperation which once drove him were gone. Grim as things seemed, there was now hope. Hope that peace could be restored to the land and to our tortured hero. But the vizier's army still hunted him. And they grew more determined by the hour. What? What is that thing? It 
That's the vizier. What's happened to him? Something terrible. Something wonderful. Wait! No! Be happy that he is gone. You never would have stood a chance. Oh, how silly of me. You're right. Perhaps we should surrender. Or turn away and leave the city. I know a lovely little island just a few weeks journey from here. I'm sure by the time we return this will all be sorted out. If it comforts you to mock me, then by all means continue. But you are so focused on killing him, you've thrown strategy completely out the window. You could have died. I suppose. But now we need to find a way to enter the temple. We're wasting time here. That seems to be our best bet. I'm not sure I like how this girl is always charging ahead. Fear not, she has already proved a valuable asset to us. You know, I've been thinking about what Farah said earlier. She has a point. How do you plan to kill the Vizier? He's immortal now. The dagger made him into what he is. It can unmake him. I suppose we will know the truth of this soon enough. Such a beautiful building. Father built these gardens as a symbol of his love for our people. Once, all the kingdom was like this. Try using these levers. If I can reach the other side, I might be able to find a way to open that door. <clears throat> Do you think you could move a little faster? You're more than welcome to come down here and try it yourself. Seven years and still nothing's changed. Seven years? What are you talking about? It's... a figure of speech. There is something very odd about you. She has no idea. Ah, we are making progress. I think I see a bell in that tower. Perhaps if you can get me to the next balcony, I can sever its rope. You can use it to access the door switch. With my luck, it will probably trigger some terrible trap. Or summon sand monsters. Or bring about the end of the world. Would it kill you to show a little optimism? Experience has taught me wishful thinking only leads to disappointment. See? You did it! We did it. Wait! There are people hurt inside. We should help them. Now is not the time, Prince. You can help all you want later. Go, Farah. Tend to the wounded. I will catch up with you once I've dealt with the Vizier. And so the Prince and Pharaoh separated. She sought to save lives, he to end them. For the Prince intended to confront his enemy, and perhaps utilize the powerful warriors who had holed up inside the temple. His mind churned with thoughts of glorious vengeance. But something new as well. Descending into the depths, his thoughts kept returning to Pharaoh. He wondered if she was thinking of him as well. To conquer a city is one thing, but to do so with such a violence and cruelty is something else entirely. I will return every blow he has landed against my kingdom. We are close, Prince. So close. Let us make him suffer.
Avalon's last line of defense, fallen. These men served my family well. With their defeat, the city is fully in the hands of the Vizier. Every time I reach him, he slips away. Why will he not just stay and fight? It would make things so much simpler. It is not always about hmm? combat, Prince. Some battles are waged in other ways, on other terms. I fear we have underestimated our opponent. Let us not make the same mistake a second time. Babylon had finally fallen, and none were left to come to the Prince's aid. He was now the city's only hope. If he failed, his entire world could be lost. For the Vizier was not content to simply be a king. No. He fancied himself a god. The question now was whether the Prince realized the position he was in. And if he did, would he accept this responsibility? Would he become a hero? Are you all right? He has escaped. And you? What of the troops? Dead. All dead. But I saw the Vizier, or whatever it is he's become. He flew towards the palace. Then we know where to go. All right. But I seem to be, well, stuck. Could you find a way to open this door? I understand the principles of courtesy, but I think you take things a bit too far. Thank you, Prince. Of course. The problem is, now I am trapped. Just like a woman. Solving her problem creates a new one for you. Allow me to return the favor, then. You were saying... Go on, then. I hope Farah is all right. You are spending way too much time looking after the girl. Is this necessary? You sound upset. Are you jealous? Just focus on getting to the palace. There you are. Keep your voice down. There are enemies below. Okay. But see if you can do something about these crates. I cannot get past them. Do you understand now? This is the sort of thing that slows us down. I can see the palace from here. Make your way to me. At last we have returned. Did you hear that? If you know what is good for you, say no. Farah, we must press on. I am sure she will be all right. Are you mad? She was begging for her life. She said there were others. No, we can afford no more delays. Good. Put her in her place. These are your people. You are their prince. And yet you would leave them to suffer? That man has taken everything from me. And now that I have the opportunity to punish him, you want to delay me? Have you forgotten what he did to you? But I... You are burdened by a guilty conscience, Farah. He made you watch as your people suffered, unable to aid them. You are not to blame. Do not let it cloud your judgment. It is not I who suffers from clouded judgment. You may choose not to help them, but you cannot stop me. I go to kill the Vizier, to end this, while you run about applying bandages to axe wounds. Good riddance. She has been nothing but a distraction, always getting into trouble and slowing us down. Finally, we can... What? Something could happen to her. I cannot lose her again. No, no, no! You're so close! Farah? Where have you gone off to? 
time. So she had reached the prince. He feared for her safety. Even if it was just one person, at least now he thought of someone other than himself. <gasps> Not let Farah see me like this. Worried she will prefer the new me. Charm skin, glowing eyes, melted face. I'm sure it will be love at first sight. Is this necessary? Yes. You're sure? Yes. Fine. Waste your valuable time rescuing the princess. I can only imagine what the Vizier is doing right now. Probably expanding his army, torturing innocent citizens, deciding what kingdom to conquer next. What he should be doing is dying. I have not forgotten my mission. Could have fooled me. I really expected quite a bit more from you. On the island of time, you were so focused, so dedicated. So selfish. Nonsense. You were simply trying to protect what was yours. Where's the harm in that? Look around. All of this destruction is my doing. Traipsing through a brothel while your city falls apart. That's not what I call heroic. I am here for Pharaoh. You're not here for her. You're here for you. You're not here for her. You're here for you. She made you feel guilty, and you hope to prove her wrong. The reasons for being here are hardly selfless. You do not know my motives, and you do not know me. I am you. And the sooner you realize it, the better. Farah! What do you want? I have thought about what you said. And you are right. I... <laughs> Can't you see we're in the middle of a conversation? If you really do desire death, kindly wait your turn. I have killed most of the guards. It should be safe. Go and find the women. Free them. I will deal with her. Wonderful work. You return to save Farah and then send her back into the thick of it while you run after this one. My hero! You know as well as I do that the brothel is no longer dangerous. But if I do not kill that sand monster, she will pose a threat to Farah. No! No! Not now! If I had some sands for every time someone said that to me. Oh, I do. The women are free and headed to safety. It was right of you to return. Prince? You. You're one of them? No, Farah! This is not how it appears! You're a sand monster! You lied to me all this time! No! I have been tainted by the sands, this is true, but my mind and my heart are my own. Please believe me. You stay away from me! Well, you did lie to her. No, I simply... Yes? But she would not understand. What was I thinking? Poor Prince. His secret self had been revealed, and Farah quite disturbed by what she had seen. Perhaps he should have been honest from the beginning. Too late he realized his mistake in staying silent. Farah, wait! The prince cleansed himself in the waters of the fountain. Though returned to a normal body, the same could not be said for his mind. 
Do you see now? The change was physical, nothing more. Why should I believe you? Everything you have done contradicts this. I have seen the way you hunger for combat. You take pleasure in creating death. Your constant talk of bloody vengeance. Your cold disregard for your own people. You heard the women in the brothel as clearly as I did, yet you turned away. But I came back. I came back. For you. You are a prince in title only. Go and reclaim your throne. But know this. You do so alone. You certainly have a way with women. Those you don't get killed can't get far enough away from you. In my youth, I would often lose myself in the back alleys of the upper city. I spent hours running and tumbling, imagining myself all manner of creatures. The rooftops and passageways were secret windows onto other worlds. But now everything has changed. The color bled away, and the sounds of life replaced by a heavy stillness. It has all gone dark and bitter. The palace is close. Let us at last be on our way. The prince was finally forced to accept the fact that Pharaoh was lost to him, and that he alone was responsible for this. Had he not hidden the truth from her, had he shown more compassion, then perhaps things may have gone another way. But no, it was simply too late. In spite of this, or perhaps because of it, the prince found himself profoundly affected by Pharaoh's earlier words and deeds. They had wrought a change in him, slowly supplanting the dark demands of his ruthless alter ego. You've been so quiet. What's on your mind? Perhaps she is right. Where is the prince I used to know? You are a hardened warrior. Stop being so, so sentimental. It's not like you. Were it something I could push away or ignore, I would. You must try. What lies ahead will be the greatest test you have yet faced. Tell me then, what do you believe it is to be a warrior? It is hunger for combat, to seek solution with the sword. Do you disagree? Had you asked me when we first met, I would have said the same. Now, I am not so sure. Think on it then. I think a true warrior fights for something other than himself. And what of the man that battles to better his own station, to improve his lot in life? Often, it is the only way to achieve greatness. But what you describe is not a man. It is a monster. I see. We will have to continue this discussion later. Help us! A fire! That's the work phone! Somebody! Ah! What has happened? These people are clearly in danger! How convenient. A burning building filled with helpless citizens just begging for rescue. What do you mean? I mean, it sounds like a trap. Ridiculous. Is it? If I was an enraged sand god intent on killing you, and you'd already slain two of my best lieutenants, well, I'd be inclined to try a less direct approach. One that exploits your newfound compassion. Trap or not, those people need me. No good will come of this. I must hurry and find a way inside. Have fun with that. You can figure it out on your own for once. I will play no part in this. Poor Prince. Locked inside a burning building and no way out. Too bad for you. Well, look at that. A trap. Do you see now what happens when you try to help other people? You die. Oh, Father, give me guidance. Lend me strength. Where have you gone? Father, gone.
Wait, that's it! Where is the machinery that controls these conveyors? Quickly, please, there is not much time! Above us, the stairs are burned, though. You will never be able to reach it. I think you're taking this hero business a little too far. You've already saved the citizens. I will admit, I was not expecting that. right moment to return thank you lucky shot we should move I'm sure more are on the way be on your guard I always am stories of such marvels but to see one up close is there not a similar device in Azad this lift will bring us to the throne room but wonder of wonders it seems to have stopped working I will try and return it to life I do hope to visit Azad someday I am sorry what I said I'm sorry I never apologized for the way I acted, for the things I said, for who I was. I owe you an apology as well. 
I owe you an apology as well. It was unfair of me to accuse you of such terrible things. But I have done terrible things. We all make mistakes, Prince. The difference is that you have accepted <gasps> yours. I saw what you did at the workshop. And what the old man said is true. You are a prince. You're killing me. We are nearly there. Soon everything will be better. You seem a bit too excited about what is to come. No, Prince. You have simply forgotten your mission. That you do not share in my joy indicates as much. What is your favorite color? Color? Shall I repeat the question? Blue. Blue? That's not my favorite color. What is the point of this? Must every conversation we have be so serious? I know so little about you. Very well. Then, what is your favorite food? The pomegranate, of course. I do not like pomegranates. What is wrong with you? They are messy, impossible to eat with dignity. So much work for a few seeds. <laughs> but is it not the effort that makes them that much sweeter? I think I'm going to be sick. What is this place? It is the heart of the Hanging Gardens. These are the instruments of life, regulating and running everything. like your father he is a good man no a great man strong loyal kind forgiving what is it I that is to say we did not part on the best of terms it was many years ago I was young and full of pride Full of fear as well. He offered to listen, but I could not find the words. Would not find them. And I only hope that I may see him once more. To say that I am sorry. But this is a story for another time. Let us speak of other things. Surrounded by so much sadness, we should not succumb ourselves. Returning to the matter at hand, I cannot get to you from where I am. I can close another shutter then. Let us regroup ahead. <laughs> there is still no way for me to get to you. However, you can reach the throne room from where you stand. And I can pass through the greenhouse. This will certainly bring us to the same location. Be careful, Prince. Ah! Do not take another step! I am impressed you made it past my little welcoming party. Impressed, but also quite annoyed. You have robbed me of my strongest allies. It would be unfair of me not to return the favor. Farah will make an excellent queen, fit for a god. Although we will need to make some modifications. Let her go! <laughs> you act as though you have a say in the matter. Which you don't. <laughs> Say hello to your- The prince was cast to his death into a pit of darkness. Robbed of Pharaoh, distanced from the vizier, he had been warned that his journey would not end well. <laughs> ah, but do not be surprised. The prince's transformation saved him. Sometimes good can come of ill. Sometimes. Ah. Once again, you have denied us victory. How many times did I warn you that nothing good would come of pursuing that girl? 
We would not be in this situation if you had just stayed focused. Enough! All you do is taunt and insult me. I do not know what you are planning, but I know that I do not trust you. And I am ashamed that I ever did. I have nothing but noble intentions. I understand now what it means to be noble, and you are none of those things. You self-righteous bastard! I have put up with you for entirely too long. Be silent. Let me finish my task. And then we shall see what to do about you. Oh yes, I forgot who's really in charge. Listen, Prince, and look around. We are in a well. But do you hear water? Do you see it? Feel its moist embrace? Why, I think it's gone. <laughs> I think the Vizier has drained it. How long do you think you can maintain your health, your control of the body? Tick-tock, Prince. Tick-tock. Feeling thirsty. Feeling dry. Oh, am I distracting you? Time is precious. Time is fleeting. Time is something you have to... Oh, would you like a drink? Father's sword? But what is it doing here? Oh, come on now. Did you really expect to find him alive? Even after everything you have experienced, still you hold out hope. Oh, Father. What have I done? What now, then? Gather up enough sand? Perform another grand rewind? Or perhaps you can return to the island and travel back to a time when he might still be saved. Maybe rescue a damsel in distress along the way. No! You are right. I have been like a child. Naive and arrogant. Always rushing to undo my mistakes. Never facing the consequences of my actions. No more. I accept what I have done. And all that it implies. What is this? You have no water. How did you... You hold no power over me now. Be gone. Retreat to whatever dark hole spawned you, and do not trouble me again. And so the prince's eyes had finally been opened to the true nature of his corrupt half. That cruel and charismatic voice which once whispered in his ear. It had subtly encouraged our burdened hero to do wrong. But now, the voice was stilled. The prince's mind once more his own. You may wonder why I would let this come to pass. So many dead, and likely more to follow. An empire reduced to rubble. A prince cast to the streets and hunted like a common criminal. But I had seen the timeline. And of all the outcomes lay bare to me, this one held the most promise of them all. For the prince would have an opportunity to set things right. Watch now. See the thing of which I speak. Now, where did I put those pieces? Zervan? What is it? 
In case I don't get the chance again. You impudent pig! I offer you life eternal, and this is how you respond? Oh, I shall enjoy changing you. Hello, Prince. Not quite the homecoming you expected. You will pay for what you have done to my people. Phantom, things will be better now. You should thank me. They live among mindless monsters in service to your madness. It is the price of progress. This world was not meant for me, but there are others, and I will find my place just as you have found yours. Be free now, Prince. Your journey is at an end. What is it? All that is yours is rightfully mine. And mine it will be. <laughs> what did you expect? That when you slew the vizier I would simply disappear? Oh, you're blind! Your rage! Your Pride, your selfish ways, they gave me form and substance. Even with the sands gone, I have the strength to remain. And with the vizier gone, I can take your place and rule the kingdom. And there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. With the ability to manipulate time itself, you had the chance to be the greatest king the world has ever known. What wars you could have fought, what monuments you could have erected in your honor, what women you could have kept. But you failed me, Prince. You grew soft and sympathetic. My attempts to convince you to seek glory fell on deaf ears. So I bided my time, waiting for the proper moment to strike. You do 
not deserve what you have been given. Control of the world's greatest empire. With the power at your command, you could rule the world. You have squandered it, Prince. I would do it justice, and so it should be mine. You are just a parasite! You deserve nothing! But don't I? Have I not earned it? Do you think you would be here now if not for me? How many times did I save you? How many times did I unblock your path, take down your enemies, remind you of your mission, while all you did was cry about your father, and Kylina, and Pharaoh, how everything bad always happens to you? Boo-hoo, Prince! Your words are empty, have always been empty. You are just a desperate, selfish spirit. If I am selfish, Prince, it is because you are. If I am ruthless and reckless and lacking in morals, it is because you are. I did not spin myself out of the ether. I was not conjured by some mad vizier. I am you. No. I have seen the error of my ways. And I have atoned for the transgressions of my past. I am no longer that person. Seasons change. Tastes change. But people? People never change. And you delude yourself believing otherwise. Do not fight me. Set down your sword. Embrace me. Kill me then, to cut me down like all your other enemies? Swing that sword, Prince! <laughs> We've seen how well that works. Such violence! Your anger serves only to feed me. So I have to ask, have you really changed? After all, I am still right here, standing before you! Relinquish control yet? By all means, stay and fight. I, on the other hand, have a kingdom to attend to. <laughs> Something I don't understand. How did you really know my name? Most people think time is like a river that flows swift and sure in one direction. But I have seen the face of time, and I can tell you, they are wrong. Time is an ocean in a storm. You may wonder who I really am and why I say this. Come. And I will tell you a tale like none you have ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> 